Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Renowned Explorers, the Emperor's Challenge. We're going out to the Andes today. Um, I think that this looks pretty bad for us on the whole. Uh, we may not win this game, but that's fine, you know? Listen, it says in a banner up at the top of the page. I guess not this page because you're watching a video, but if you were to go back to my main channel page, failure's instructive, right? Um, in the beta, when I played this mode, you could basically just kind of screw around and do whatever you wanted and still have a pretty good chance of, of winning this mode. Uh, it is not the case anymore, and that is what we've learned. So before the crew has time to orient themselves, a group of warriors finds them. Foreign intruders, they must have come to topple our emperor. Get them! Okay, well, I think that's a weird conclusion to jump to. Every time you see somebody who doesn't look like they're from there, you assume they're going to topple your emperor. I mean, maybe it's a thing that's happened a lot. So hit three targets with a single area of effect ability. An important thing to note about the efficient is that um, if the if you have an area effect ability that t can affect your crew members, then your crew members count as targets. So like if we did a war dance with uh, Phylin that hit both of our crew members and one other guy, it would satisfy this. So this is a very easy one for this crew. All right, so these dudes have big weapons, big uh, like obsidian bricks with spikes on the sides. It's pretty, it's pretty dope, honestly. But it looks like there is just the three of them. I don't give them strong odds, as you can see. Our aggressive, uh, aggressive is the way we want to end this. But we're gonna open up on them with the with the war dance, I think. So let's give everybody some confidence. And then obviously we don't want to remain friendly, so Hojo's gonna smack somebody in the face. Unfortunately, there's no there's no way really for Dolores to contribute to combat this round. That's fine. We're not in any danger. She'll uh she'll be okay. Oh yeah, that's right. Being friendly isn't even that big of a deal against aggressive people anymore, thanks to Hojo's thing. Uh, there's nowhere... I guess, actually, we can have Dolores stand here, and this guy won't be able to melee anyone. Oh, no, it looks like he can get Hojo. Okay, so let's undo her move, and instead uh, give a little bit of confidence to Phylene. Since this dude's gonna be able to do damage either way. And frankly, if he's gonna hit somebody, he should hit Dolores, right? Look at that, she just puts her arms up and takes it. That probably hurts a lot. All right, not much to this, right? We just hit people. Uh, give this guy an assassination. Uh, remember, even if we don't fulfill the extra power effects, it still is an attack that does 125% damage with a boosted hit chance, so it's even likely to hit people who have grit. There are not a lot of enemies that that can dodge, um, but we're prepared for them, apparently, if we, if we should run into them. I'm going to move Hojo to here just to make it slightly more awkward. Um, for this guy on the left to be able to move around to file in. Because how much move does he have? Yeah, he only has three move. If I hadn't moved Hojo, this guy could have gone one, two, three, and possibly taken a point of resolve off of us. Although, I guess I also could just stop him from moving entirely, couldn't I? Why don't you just stay right there? Hit me with that whatever you call it again. It seemed to work out so well for you last time. So as you can see, though, the enemies are starting to hit quite a bit harder. Alright, easy enough. Good start. These invaders are formidable! Run! We have to warn the Imperial Guard! These foreigners are sure to topple our glorious Emperor and steal all our national treasures. <laughs> Not entirely wrong. Though you only plan to topple anyone who's between you and treasure. Yeah, they, uh, they do seem to have our number. So, let's get this straight. There's an Emperor who holds great national treasures. Judging by the aggression and defensive attitude of the warriors you just faced, that Emperor is not very friendly. Maybe you should pay him a visit. I'm just here for treasure. It doesn't... none of those dialogue options do anything. They're all the same. <clears throat> well, you already know what to look for at the palace and the Emperor. You're not sure what you're going to do there, but you do know you'll have to be careful with the Imperial Guard. You know, something tells me we're gonna be okay. <clears throat> so we want to find a treasure as quickly as possible. It might be tough to beat her to this one. Um, we'll have to see how quickly she progresses. 
While exploring a new area, you suddenly hear stern voices from behind. Halt, cooperate, and hear us! You will bow to the great leader, and he will be pleased with our, our devotion to your capture. These disciples are cool as ice. What a strange thing to... I think that's supposed to be telling us that they're devious. Uh, that's a strange way to put it. Nope, they're aggressive. They're just weird. Okay, have four terrified opponents at the same time. That sounds like a recipe for trouble. Trying to keep four people alive and in a particular emotion. Oh no, that's right. Uh, people who are defeated are still the emotion that they are. Okay, so... How much damage do I think I can get out of this? Not a ton. These guys aren't particularly weak to anything, nor are they particularly strong against anything. So I think what we're going to do is... Open with an aggressive attack. And that way, with both of us aggressive, we'll get a buff to our devious damage. And then she can drop this, which will take one of them out. And then Hojo can come over here and try to put this guy away. Nope. Will not get close. I'm going to go after him with the attack that's not guaranteed to hit. Because even just using it will give us that third pip of deviousness. And move us into... Uh, I don't remember what this mood is called. Move us into provocative. And take advantage of that extra grit. Wow, that dude's terrified face is... <laughs> it's a little crazy. Alright, so Phylon ha has 32 33. I'm looking at our offensive stats. Trying to figure out who needs to move over this way. So this guy is gaining confidence every turn. And when he's confident, his stats are crazy. So we need to break that. He's not weak to anything but sadness. But we can just run over here and give him a good, good old-fashioned terrify. And that should move his, uh, it'll move his emotionometer down into the negatives enough that when he ticks up positive on his turn, I think it'll only take him to the middle area and he won't be confident yet. So why don't we try this? Remember, terrifying these guys, in addition to uh, doing damage to them and satisfying emotion spreader, is also reducing their attack power. Minus 25% attack power from being terrified. So, uh, we're also making ourselves a lot safer. Yeah, I think, I think I remember during the beta emotion spreader not counting anymore on defeated targets. I may be wrong. Um, but the fact that it still it still remembers what emotion people were when they were defeated uh, makes it a lot easier to get those. I really appreciate that. Okay, these guys are having just a hell of a time hitting us thanks to our great big grit buff. This is what I'm saying. Like It's so important to control your emotions, and it's such a good... Man, this combat system is such a good design. I love it so much. Alright, let's just shank this dude. It's time to burn him down. Yeah, that attack does pretty good damage. Unfortunately, we don't really have a lot of AoE available to us, but we can just punch people really hard. Uh, why don't you finish this dude off? And then we will uh, interpose Dolores between this guy and Philene. And in fact, we can just uh, we can take him down with a pinning strike. And now all that's left is the confident dude, who unfortunately is going to give somebody a hell of a wallop this turn. But we're all in pretty good health. Yeah, that wasn't so bad. Alright, kick his ass, everybody. Want to finish Devious here. Well, do I? Would I rather have... Yeah, I, I would rather have campaign study than study study. I really do want to try to complete that... Uh, that research paper branch that we're working on as quickly as possible, but the value of study, the value of campaign tokens for us is it's been pumped too high to not want to take the campaign token. These disciples are no problem. Okay, well, I mean, obviously we're going to take the zero-cost travel. 
yeah, I think that's uh, it's, that would be pretty hard not to go for. From a short distance, you can see some people performing a religious ritual. So we pray to Supe, the god of death, not to come for us this year. We grovel before his might. I usually pray to Sithrak myself. Very, uh, very interesting. Well, let's observe the ritual for the story. The ritual is very interesting indeed. After a few minutes, the followers leave the site. Phylin wonders if you could take advantage of this ritual somehow. You'll never know. Interesting. I don't... Hmm. I don't know that I've seen that encounter before, honestly. That's pretty... That was a weird one. Okay, well, let's, uh... I really want to get to this village. I'm surprised these two nodes don't link. The map of the, the node paths is not always what you would expect it to be. Well, we could cut down to the south here. My thinking is that I want to reveal what's in the fog over here, because it's going to be very easy for us to reveal this stuff later on as we're just trying to get from place to place, these little villages from one village to another. But we're not going to have a lot of opportunities to reveal around the edges of the area. Or we could just suck it up, take this to travel. Uh, I mean, moving from here to here uh, at a cost of two is, you know, it's just as though they had both been ones. Yeah, let's move here. This will let us see all of these nodes. Ooh. You encounter a lonely villager, peacefully gathering food from local plants. Phylan approaches him and sees he's trembling heavily. I'm sorry, but if I don't warn the guards, they will hurt me! The villager runs away and warns the guards. What an ass. Uh, so, I mean, maybe we shouldn't beat this guy up. Hmm, if we finish friendly, the villager might be grateful. I don't remember what this gives, but we'll go for it. So first of all, this is the villager. Let's not let's not kick his ass. Really, I can't I can't take him out with that. Is he weak to anything? That's just sadness. Sadness is a very powerful emotion in this game. I think sad is probably the the most powerful of the attack emotions. Although um, excite also works against a lot of things. Uh, but if you're having, if you have a party and you really want to go devious really badly, I would strongly advise you take some Saturn. Somebody who's good at it. Uh, how far do you move? Okay, so we don't have to let them get adjacent to us at all. I love this. This is this is a real good uh, level up point. Okay, so they put themselves. Oh, I wasn't even paying attention to this. Do 65 attack damage to a single target at once. I think that it's unlikely we'll, we will be getting that because I haven't bothered to really upgrade our offenses. But if we do an enrage and then throw like an assassinate for 125 times her attack of 41. Yeah, we, we can maybe get there. Unfortunately, she's the only one who has enrage. So we're talking about a multiple turn operation here. Uh, and we'd really want to do it on one of these normal guys. Because they have zero base armor, whereas that dude has 20 base armor. Alright, let's figure out what our turn is going to look like. So can we wipe out a couple of these dudes? Ooh, maybe not. Reaching out isn't going to help. Dolores, can you knock out a guy? Okay, so Dolores and Hoja are going to have to work together to put even one of these guys out of condition. That's a little unfortunate. Oh, I haven't talked about these yellow zones on the ground. While you're in one of the yellow zones, if you're in one of the yellow zones at the beginning of your turn, you get a percentage of your max HP as healing. So that's a, that's a nice thing. We could lay it on these guys... Honestly, though, I don't want to get these guys too low because I need them to be able to survive getting enraged if we're going to go for Painbringer, and I think we have to. So we're in a real spot here as far as Porcelain Points goes. So I think we're just going to have Hojo and Dolores combine their powers to smash one of these dudes up. And then we'll have Phylin move into the spot that he vacates. Because here, we can have at most one enemy adjacent to us, so she won't get completely wrecked. And I will enrage that guy, because I think we're a little bit more likely to be able to get a flanking situation set up on him. 
We're gonna go for it. We're gonna try to bring the pain. Alright. It looks like they're, uh... They're just gonna wallop, wallop Hojo a little bit. Okay. Here we go. If this doesn't work, there was no way for us to get this. And then from here, we'll want to finish friendly. 66. That was it. We got it. Awesome. Okay, yeah, so we gotta, we gotta finish friendly from here. This dude is... Okay. That could be easier to work with. We can give him... We can do reaching out. We'll give him plus attack. Uh, I don't love that. Yeah, this is actually a pretty hard one to finish friendly. You really want to take this guy out aggressively and then friendly all these dudes to death, probably. Well, we don't really have that option at this point. Why don't we try to bring this guy down? Yeah. Let's try to bring this guy down friendly. That'll that'll add us some uh, some decent friendly points. No reason not to stand in the regen zone. All right. Her damage uh, her damage varied up a little bit. We got we got a lucky damage roll there basically, and she was able to finish it off. And then that dude does a buff. What is this buff? Ah, okay. Well, he's not immune to impress, so my plan here is going to be... Uh, we're going to make him confident. And make him confident. And then end the turn, every turn, with a half damage... Impress just that he's not confident during his turn. There we go. We're already taking an armor penalty here, so we're gonna be a little bit careful. Yeah, Philin needs to not take a lot of those. Unfortunately, he is immune to her other friendly attack. So why don't we have her move to here? Just throw devious stuff at him. I can't I can't melee attack him. If we do anything aggressive, we end aggressive. Although, if we get enough points ahead on friendly, it might not matter. Alright, yeah, this is a little silly, but we're gonna wear him down. Who wouldn't be impressed with that level of sweeping? You basically have a superpower, you're like Quicksilver. But you use it to sweep. It's very difficult to understand you, Hojo. You're a strange man. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, he's low enough now that Hojo can finish him off. That's an adorable animation. <clears throat> Hojo's so embarrassed. The villager approaches you. Wow, thank you so much! I didn't think anyone could stand up to the Emperor. Here, I'll teach you some secrets about this area's plants. Three study tokens? That's what we got from that? Huh. Okay. Uh, this is interesting. I don't know what this is. Should we go for it? Yeah, I don't want to have to come back later. So I'm going to go here first, just because I think it behooves us to take every encounter that is offered to us. You arrive in a small Incan village. Phylin is not sure whether this particular village is with or against the Emperor. Phylin notices some signs with red crosses through them. Then the villagers greet you. Good day, friends. At least, that wholly depends on your opinion of the Emperor. They're expecting an answer. Well, obviously, if they're crossing out signs that have been placed, we assume, you know, by the uh, local municipal government, I think they probably don't like the Emperor that much. Good guess. The villagers believe you speak wise words and promise to spread your wisdoms. There's four campaign tokens for us. However, then we tell them that we're actually supporting the Emperor, because I want the reward from the check and the reward from fighting them. They're just villagers. It'll be fine. An emotion spreader shouldn't be too hard to pull off here. So these guys are pretty weak. 
Just run over here, throw a punch. Ooh. Not necessarily gonna get that. Why don't we have Hojo come over here? Hojo's tough. Hojo can start us up, making these guys terrified. And Dolores can go hunting and get the other guys. Well, eventually she can. I mean, I don't know. Buff Hojo's speech power. It's gonna take a second for those guys to reach us, unfortunately. The, uh, the terrain is a really important part of the game. Like, it's super important that you use blocking terrain to your advantage. And the game has a good, solid, tactical combat thing. Uh, under the hood here. I really... I really... I, you're probably tired of hearing me praise the game all the time, but man, I just really like this game. I think there's a lot of great design in here. I guess just heal him. I don't... Phylon doesn't really have a lot to contribute until we have our, uh... Until we have our mood thing sorted out. Or our emotion thing, rather. Once we have emotion spreader locked up, I think we can probably just uh, blow these guys up aggressive. Aggressively. Okay. Hojo, would you mind maybe actually getting this? There you go. Alright. Finally, can get. cannot quite get close enough to hit that guy. We can go down here and uh, give him a good roar. That'll do that, and now it is time to seg into violence. These guys are having the weirdest day. Yeah, a professional wrestler showed up and shouted at us, and then some lady kicked me in the head. Okay, so they're using Satin. Now they've swapped into Devious. Uh, this is, I think, the first time we've seen enemies that are actually changing their... Attitude, but it is something that we're going to see a lot of over the course of the game. Uh, in the later expeditions, is very common. And they've done it. They've made us look like fools. Too late, I'm afraid. Ah, we didn't... I built up too many points of deviousness. Wasn't able to get enough attacks off. Wow, okay, okay, your opinion is right. The villagers turn away and let you go on your way. Okay, that was good XP. Well, it looks like we might actually beat them to a treasure. There's an epic encounter here with a treasure locked behind it. The Dark Ritual. What in Pinkerton's name is going on over there? A dark group of Incas just seems to have beaten up on a just seem to have beaten up a guard post. That dude's face is terrifying. Ka ka ka! With knowledge of the ritual and the Imperial Guard out of my way, nothing can stop me. Ka ka ka. Is that is that how he laughs, maybe? Seems like an internal dispute. Yeah, we'll just <laughs> This is none of our business, right? No, go take a look. The Imperial Guard has been beaten up pretty badly. Phylin rushes towards some of the soldiers who are still conscious. Oh no! The high priest is going to the altar of Urkuchale. Urkuchale. If he completes the ritual, his dark ambitions will become reality. The wounded man continues. It is said that the one that completes the ritual at the altar of Ukrchule will be blessed by the gods and gain superhuman powers. The high priest believes it is his duty to chastise the Inca people because they have lost their ways. He wants to bring an apocalypse upon the Inca lands. Well, that's not great. I'm in the Inca lands. Please, you got to stop the high priest. Once he gets the powers of Ukrchule, one of these times I'm going to get that right at full speed. He will be unstoppable and trigger the end of the Incan world. No, no pressure, though. But then ponders what to do. What do you mean ponders what to do? We are right here. We will also die. Follow him. You have to do this. The future of the Incas and also ourselves depends on you. Phylon rallies the crew and heads out to follow the high priest into the dark and dense jungle. On your way, you find an Inca, so in an Inca scholar. He's sweating profusely, but is keen on keeping his mouth shut. It looks like he was with the high priest and maybe told him about the ritual. Now that he's useless to the high priest, he's been left behind. If we had enough, I'm sure if we had like three points or four points of diplomat or something, there'd be a way that we could convince this guy to tell us about the ritual. But we saw somebody performing a ritual. That might be all we need. The jungle seems to be influenced by the dark powers active around the altar. 
you can get some real neat research from exploring the corrupted jungle in a quick yet precise fashion. Of course, you risk allowing the world to end. It's Phylon's choice. No pressure. Uh, so if we go for this and we fail it, we lose a point of resolve, which isn't so bad. We have quite a lot. Um, but also, we will lower our odds for a coming challenge. I mean, our odds of success are better than a coin flip. Unfortunately, you can't spend a level up during an event, so the fact that this, the fact that even going for the spin levels Hojo up will not help um, during the encounter that is at the end of this event. I've actually seen this before, but I don't think I ever managed to get it on camera. Uh, Hojo? Or if we don't even go for it, we just get plus 10% on that challenge. If we succeed on this, we don't get that bonus. Hojo, we believe in you. Our belief was not misplaced. The jungle is indeed changing rapidly. The leaves are getting darker. The branches are starting to curl. This god power probably isn't a way to give superhuman forgiveness or love. Hojo did well not losing track of the high priest, and your Andy's saving quest continues. To the altar. Lots of XP. Or lots of tokens. Also some XP. Wahaha! That is a hell of an altar. There it is, the altar of Urkuchale. I did it. The atmosphere is heavy. You can just feel the power of the ancient gods flowing through the air. This story of godly powers must be true. Amazing. But there is no time to be stunned. The high priest is already performing the ritual. With this last sacrifice of blood, the ritual will be complete, and I will bring forth apocalypse. The Inca people will get what it deserves. You got, you got to. We got to stop him now. She actually gets bonus odds from specifically from having wrestling. Go, Dolores. Wrestle that high priest. She was born for this moment. Dolores jumps toward the high priest and a struggle ensues. Dolores is just in time to slap knife out of the priest's hand. Slap, slap the knife out of the... It seems total disaster has been averted, possibly. Go, Dolores. But alas... The struggle gets a bit too rough, and a blood drop flies all the way to the altar. The ritual is completed anyway. There's no way to stop the ritual from being completed, so don't worry about that. Ka, ka, ka. Now I will get my godly powers. Don't think I will spare you in my punishment, foreigners. Holy smokes. The high priest is transforming. Ka, 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 ka. Bah? The high priest has turned into a half llama, half human. This is probably what he meant to do. It's hard to take the High Priest seriously. His followers instantly lose all respect for him. Apocalypse, he said? More like alpaca... Al is that alpaca? Alpaca? More like alpaca-lips. Ooh. Fools! You do not see the power I now hold. You will all perish. I won't stop until all has been brought to ashes. I don't... Okay. What is he doing? It seems he's not bluffing. A large number of rabid llamas charge from over the hills. His men start fleeing, but your opponent is still formidable. He seems to be more strongly influenced by the boot. Maybe you can take advantage of that. Well, let's save the world, shall we? Okay, so this encounter has some interesting stuff in it. Uh, yeah. The provocative and hostile moods have been replaced for this encounter. They have special versions. So provocative gives double the grit and abuse and uh, hostile gives double the bonus to devious damage. Uh, we do not want to end this friendly, because we'll be forced into his llama cult. But, uh, devious or aggressive will get us a good outcome, and I think you know how we're probably going to land on that. He is particularly weak to confident and, uh, friend and uh, enraged. The llamas are mostly weak to enrage. And then he's got a special llama over here. The red llama is a relentless llama. It will... Don't be friendly to this dramatic opponent. It will attack or spit at you one turn and just not care the next. Okay, so the red llamas attack every turn. They're the machine guns of the llama world. I think that's a thing that everybody knows. So we definitely want to be devious by the time of our turn. We want to take advantage of that huge grit bonus. But I think we probably want to open with an aggressive attack here, just to um, just to get the big devious damage bonus before we uh, before we throw out our damage. So maybe Hojo runs back and attacks, and then Dolores can like move to here and drop a big roar. It's unfortunate that these guys are just out of range for most of our attacks. I guess we could 
You know what? Let's have Phylon... Here's the plan. Hojo's gonna run over here. He's gonna smack somebody with his broom. Okay. Now that that has happened, Dolores can move forward and prepare the big roar. Uh, the big roar would be more effective if she was confident. But we can't, we can't afford to have Phylon make her confident. Because we have to we have to get this off and then we have to use a devious ability from Phylon and it has to be lethal. So like we have to hit this guy with an enrage. Actually, can she finish that guy off with an enrage? She could, maybe. Let's try it. Ah, that sucks. Okay. So because that didn't hit and we don't get our bonus point of deviousness from finishing off an opponent. Uh, we are not going to be devious for our turn. Shoot. Well, there was a there was an eighty percent chance of my plan being brilliant. We got the uh, we got the bad roll. We're just gonna have to have to deal with it. Okay, so Dolores can be tough over here for a while, but we are going to have to rescue her in a moment. Wow, the llamas are fast. Okay, they're going for physical attacks mostly, which I th think is good for us. I think our, our armor on the whole is better than our speech defense. Come on, dodge. Yeah. Alright, that sucks. This guy moving made it so Phylon can't war dance all of those opponents at once. He blocked the path. This is looking like it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Yeah, if he wasn't here, if I then could move to this location and we could get a really sick war dance off. Well, I mean, I guess as it is, we can just move Hojo to here. Yeah, that's not bad. And there's no, yeah, there's no way for Dolores to get over here to help us. Uh, and she can't quite get to this space. I want her to move to the other side of these guys so that she doesn't get wrecked by all of the incoming llamas, but I'd really like her to be able to come over here and then attack. Sadly, all of her attacks are melee range. Wow, that is a... that is a face. The the thing that is kind of a bummer about this is that, um... If we encourage these guys, if we make them confident, uh, they'll headbutt us harder. Although I guess none of these dudes are gonna attack this coming turn. Yeah, you know what? Let's do it. The blue ones only attack every other turn, right? So let's do that. And then we'll have... Oof, Dolores. Okay, Dolores has to move to the other side. She's going to get machine, done, machine gunned down if we don't. I'm going to have her do this. Then I'll move us over to Devious. If... Uh, you kill an enemy with an attack if you defeat an enemy with an attack that is the same mood or the same attitude as your current attitude it will remove pips from the other attitude bars so if we would had Hojo finish one of these guys off aggressive uh, prior to doing that then we wouldn't have had enough uh, deviousness to switch moods Alright, well, we're whittling them down. I'm not entirely happy with how this is going. I'm starting to think we might be in a little bit of danger here. Oh, he's standing in the regen space. Not my favorite place for him to be. Yep, the blue llamas will all take a turn off of fighting us. We want to make sure that they are uh, down before they get to take advantage of that confidence we gave them. Oh, that's lucky. Dolores is tough, but she's, uh, she's really, the damage is adding up, you know? So two turns until we can war dance, one turn until we can do the other thing. Uh, Primal Roar. Our AoE damage is going to be really valuable until we can cut their numbers. So what, finally goes after one of these guys. I kind of want her to do Devious. Like, I don't really want to slide out of Provocative. But my concern is that if we don't... Oh, the Red Llamas are weak to Terrify. How did I not notice that? 
Okay. So here's what we can do. Finally goes after this guy. Kicks him in the back. This will swatch, swap us to aggressive. Us being aggressive will give Dolores enough power on her Terrify to guarantee that she can uh, scare a Llama out of the fight in a single shout. That'll give us back two points of Devious. And then Hojo just uses a Devious ability and we end up uh, Devious again. And there's an 80% chance that he also removes a Llama from combat. Awesome. Okay, that worked really well. Now remember, we really would like to end the end the uh, encounter aggressive if we could for the end extra tokens, but I won't be heartbroken if we end up devious. And this dude has so much HP. Oh, what's he doing? Oh no, he's going to demonstrate the true power of the llama. I've never been so scared of a llama. Llama are llamas and alpacas the same animal? Is an alpaca a type of llama? Uh-oh. I think Dolores is going to go down. Yeah. Okay, so this is the first time we've had that happen. And they're building, like, a wall around her. It's very inconvenient. So, when a crew member goes down, you lose a point of resolve. Uh, and every crew member has this revive ability. So, if you revive, the injured crew member comes back to life with, like, 80% health. And the reviver gets a speech defense and armor buff for two turns. Oh, that's beautiful. That was wonderful. War Dance is not available to us. I think we might lose Filene here. She's going to have to get lucky. Alright, yeah. Just kick that llama in the face. That'll be fun. Alright, we're, we're bringing him down. I'm sure, like the other bosses, he's going to, you know, endlessly summon adds. But if we can keep the number of guys involved in the fight at any one time small... Uh, we can control things. Yeah, this is probably going to drop Phylon if it hits her. Ah. Okay, that's it's probably good that that missed. I should actually have checked this. Try to get in the provocative mood. Oh, okay. So yeah, he and his dudes get stronger and they try to get you into this mood so you can get all the extra dodge. I see. I see. Okay, uh... What's my play here? We gotta we gotta deal with these llamas. Okay, so how about this? Hojo wakes up Philean. Philean throws a war dance. And then uh, Dolores will be able to trivially bring down this llama. Don't wanna do it in any particular way. I guess staying provocative is fine. Yeah, we may end up just finishing this provocative because it's safer. Hopefully that will be the last point of resolve we lose. Ooh. That hurts. Alright, but he only has... How much movement does he have? He has four movements, so actually it's going to be pretty hard to keep him off of uh, the target he wants to hit. How do we stop... How do we get him out of rage mode? We've already got him terrified. I don't know. Okay, so... Can he target... He cannot target friendlies with that. This dude has 500 health. Well, 400 health. We have some stuff that he's weak to. I'm trying to figure out a situation where we can use the terrain to stop him from getting to Phylian. One, two, three... Yeah, if I there's no way to build a wall to prevent him from getting to her because he has too much movement. If he only had three movement, this would work. Oops, sorry. This would work, and we can put Phylon over here. But he has one, two, three, four, so he gets her anyway. Well, this actually may still be right. So let's try to enrage him. And then we're just going to lay into him. Oh, actually, we can stop him from moving. Ah, uh, damn it. Well, we can stop him from moving with Pinning Strike, right? We can hold him for one turn. Are you out of move? You are out of move. Okay, well, I was really hoping to get Enrage off before that happens, so that we could 
you know, uh, what do you call it, so that we could drop his armor. So this will remove two devious and aggressive pips and adds. This will this will take us to friendly if I do it. It's good damage, but I really don't want to be friendly right now. I want to be devious. Although I guess we could move to uh, we can move to aggressive. It wouldn't be the end of the world. All right, so he's probably just going to hit Dolores. Yeah, Dolores is tough enough that it doesn't really matter. Oh, okay. His his power mode has worn off. Well, I still want to try to get him with the enrage. If we can get his armor down, ah, two eighty percent misses in a row. That's bad luck, man. All right. Well, with him being uh, no longer powered up, I'm gonna take us back to aggressive. Power up Phylin's Enrage, and hopefully we'll actually connect. Looks like he's still immobilized. Yeah, he's not hitting very hard. It also looks like maybe he's not going to spawn any more adds, which will make things a lot easier on us. Please just take the hit. Yes. Alright, so not only did that do a ton of damage, but he is now at 5 armor. So soon it will be time to, uh, soon it will be time for the backstabbing. We're not going to be able to get the super damage version of the backstab, unfortunately. Man, this dude has a lot of health. What you need so much health for, man? Yeah, he's just doing the thing we knew he was going to do as soon as he could move. Yeah, that's really crappy. It really sucks that he has so much mobility. Is she adjacent to Hojo? She is. Ah, but their their attitude meters or their emotion meters are all the way in the negative, so there's no way we'll ever get these people uh, back to being confident. Well, I can't move in a way that makes it so he can't get to us. Yeah, there's nothing. That, there's nothing that can be done. Oh, we can do reaching out now. It adds three friendly pips to the mood, uh, that, which will not actually take us friendly from hostile. So let's throw this, just because it hits really hard. Yeah, fifty-six, not bad. And I guess we could just throw another enrage again, just just based on the fact that it hits really hard. We'll go back to, you know, we'll go back to aggressive in a moment. Oh, he's going into rage mode. Uh, is, yes, pinning strike is available again. So we're going to move Phylin away from him. Throw another in rage. And we'll use pinning strike to uh, to keep him off of her. Hojo and, uh, Hojo and Dolores would both survive a hit, so I'm not too worried about that. Okay, we've almost got him. I think we'll I think we'll finish him off before he has a chance to move again. That hurt though. Losing three uh, resolve in an encounter is really bad. Stab him! You did it, Phylin. You assassinated a llama monster. Yes, <laughs> good work, Rivalu. While I was off saving the world, you impressed a couple people. Victory! You're not going to let some ludicrous llama beat you. As a reward for your effort, the crew takes a golden statue from the altar. Phylin thinks you've deserved it, saving the world from the apocalypse and all. You know, I agree. Okay, so... Plus one discovery when spending insight in Beijing, or two insight, or two secrets, or upgrade study token. 
So spending insight in Beijing, that is a thing we're going to be doing. Uh, the research paper ability that's in the tree that we're going into that gives us the ability to spend our tokens in Asia, Beijing is one of the places where you can do that. Unfortunately, I don't remember which one Beijing is. I don't remember which token Beijing is. Uh, we could also just take the two insight. Like, discovery tokens are not that great for us. We can just we can just take this as 280 renown plus 4 insight. Or we could take secret tokens. Our secret tokens are pretty good. But we're going to be spending insight on secret tokens plus other stuff. I'll take the insight. The crew returns to the more sane parts of the jungle. What an adventure that was. A high priest, a dark ritual, a wicked transformation. Phylin thinks you've seen it all. But did someone maybe secretly convert to worship Urkuchale? Ur Ur I forgot. The battle The battle just knocked the information right out of me. Alright. So, uh... I think we just want to give him Quick Thinker Alert. Just, like, go all in on this. Uh, giving him Tenacious would give us more Collect Tokens from Dolores' crew story. And he's not the guy we're stacking Grit on anyway. Yeah, you know what? Let's let's go for the extra Collect Tokens. Plus the stats, you know, Attack and Armor. That's good stuff. Oh, and he earned his final ability. Enough! Uh, it does plus 50% damage if the... Or sorry, it has plus 50% power, which is not exactly the same thing. Uh, if the opponent is aggressive. So when we're in aggressive versus aggressive battles, this is just a better normal melee attack, but it has a two-turn cooldown. It's fine. It's not a terribly exciting ability. And Dolores is going to pick up... Do I want to pick up Quick Thinker with her? I guess we can't guarantee that she'll always have stamina, because we may want to remove the machete, although the terrifying booster plays into our ability as well. You know what? Let's let's plan to leave the machete on her, which means that athlete stamina won't do anything, and we'll get this. And there we go. Now we have two trinket slots. Oh. Oh yeah, we hit we hit a thousand renown there. Cool. We almost have enough collector uh, study tokens to get this, and we got the collect a treasure uh, challenge from that last one. So if we hit this, this has a science icon on it, it may well give us enough to get collector of study. Uh, when two encounters with the friendly attitude has come up, we might go for this. We really need porcelain. Like, pretty badly. Interesting. A herd of llamas in their natural environment. Dolores wants to conduct a study on herd behavior, but the situation is a bit, well, boring. If there was a predator or an avalanche, Dolores might learn more about herd characteristics. This is not good science. Don't don't cause avalanches. Uh, so if we if we get this, it would complete collector of study. And I mean we better than a better than a coin flip. Let's go for it. Phylin, cause some mischief. Phylin has a plan. First she imitates the sound of a jaguar. And while they're already panicking, she creates an avalanche. The llamas are in a state of complete panic and don't know how to get away fast enough, trampling each other without any regard. The behavioral lesson learned? Llamas only care about themselves. I'd say that lines up with things. It's time for another training session. This time, Dolores will tutor Hojo. Hojo resists slightly, but it's nigh impossible to stand up to a determined Dolores. Hojo can't just start like that before he can start his wrestling career, obviously. He needs a new wrestling name. La Escoba Furiosa. I don't know what this means. Escoba. Uh, snail? No, that's not right. I don't know. That probably means mad. Now the training can begin. Hojo, become a wrestler. What an exhausting training. Hojo is absolutely shattered. The sparring sessions were quite bonding, though. Dolores is very proud of the crew's progress. Next time, she'll try to organize a local wrestling tournament. If it goes well, the professional wrestling world better prepare for Los Exploradores. Doris, is it, do you say the... Okay, whatever. And the two crew members like each other more. And we just finished Collector of Study. So we're catching up a little bit. He hasn't he hasn't gained uh, any distance on us, I don't think. So now Dolores likes Hojo, which is worth plus 5 armor and plus 5 grit. 
and he gets plus five spirit from liking Dolores. Dolores is a good party member. She's friendly, everybody seems to like her, liking her is really valuable. From a short distance, you see some people performing a religious ritual. So we dance in joy for Mama Pacha and hope she'll bring us greater fertility. That is interesting. But we only have four supplies left, and I really love supplies. The ritual is very interesting indeed. After a few minutes, the followers leave the site. Phylin wonders if you could take advantage of this ritual somehow. You'll never know. I don't know what these things are, uh, are suggesting. Okay, this might be a good time to take Meet the Locals. Uh, Phylin is at two Beguiler and three Diplomat. So if we take an, a point of Diplomat, what is the Diplomat thing here? Oh, it's Generous, which she already has. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, but a point of Beguiler wouldn't hurt. And I think the two supplies would be really nice right now. And then this is going to be very valuable for us. Uh, oh, we have to select our target. What a shock. Phylon is just chilling out, maxing, relaxing all cool when a couple of locals pop up. Is this going to be another encounter? To arms! Fortunately, the locals aren't up to no good. They just saw the fire and were curious to meet some new people. Phylon is relieved. Certainly, she wasn't in the mood for another fight or discussion. To make sure you don't spend the entire night in awkward silence, Phylon takes the lead to show them how charming a foreigner can be. Wow, this is... Taking one encounter token over a perk seems real bad. What a joyous occasion. Phylon quickly learns how to become more charming, inspired by the Andes range culture. One of the locals even becomes infatuated with her. Well, I mean, wearing a hat like that, it's hard not to be. After a very pleasant night, they share a gift of their supplies and return home. Yeah, not bad. Oh look, more supplies! Oh, the crew accidentally trespasses on a hostile village. Dozens of villagers angrily face the crew. You're not going to convince them all individually, and knocking a whole village out wouldn't go down well in the ethics committee. We've definitely knocked out more than a village worth of people at this point. Well, we have some speakers, we have some diplomats. Let's, uh, let's attempt to diplomatize. I would really like to hit this. I'm not sure who gets experience from this. It might be everybody, it might be nobody. The important thing is, we got two supplies. With a combined effort and the clever targeting of the village elders, the crew wins over the hearts of the villagers. Glorus almost botches it. But Phylon makes a smooth recovery. You know, Dolores, she's not going to be good at everything. Everyone is invited for a feast where you exchange ideas. The leftovers of the feast are packed in a llama bag and given to the crew as, supp as supplies. That's a bag made of llamas? Or like a bag from a llama? No answer. Okay, so... Um, I know that when we enter this village, we're going to have the chance to travel for free. Well, not exactly for free, but without having to spend supplies to the other villages. So if we want to take this encounter, we should probably do it before we step into the village. In fact, why don't we go here, and then we'll take the encounter, and then we'll step in. A physical challenge stands before you. Someone needs to make a le the leap across a gap to secure a rope. An athlete is most suitable to make it. If they dare. Or double dare. Because it said physical challenge. Ah, probably a lot of my audience is too young to get that, actually. <laughs> Dolores easily jumps over the gap because she's the greatest athlete of all time, and secures the rope. The other side of the chasm contains some valuables and interesting plants. Okay. Ooh. Oh, she's making, she's making progress on the thing, and we're not getting in any encounters, so we can't keep up with her. You come across a small Incan patrol led by one of their fierce commanders. Fortunately, they haven't seen you yet, and the terrain ahead provides some cover. But the group is spread out and is patrolling in complicated patterns. Let's try to move in such a pattern that no one finds us. Okay, uh... If you have a tactician in the group, they can observe the movements of the Incan troops and tell you which one of these options is right. We don't know, so let's just guess. Oh, we got spotted. What you really want to do is you want to get through it. And then after you get through it and get the reward uh, for doing so, then you have the option of... Uh, coming out of hiding and telling the patrol what they're doing wrong, at which point they fight you. So you again get that uh, that wonderful, greedy, double-dipping on rewards. So we want to try to finish some people off with Impress. And we want to end this battle friendly. Will Dolores do enough damage to make the Impress? Ah, uh, it doesn't look like it. I think we're all three of us are going to have to friendly this guy. Oh, I don't know. She did kind of a lot of damage. Let's see... Let's see what the impress odds look like. 
Oh yeah, so he'll get him. Alright, so in this case, the difference in effectiveness, or the difference in reward between aggressive and friendly is relatively minor, so I don't feel too bad going for this, even though there's a pretty good chance that um, Rivalu will finish it before we can. We may as well try it, because I really need those porcelain points. Okay, these guys are approaching with maximum slowness. We'll just buff each other up for another turn. Alright, since we're trying to resolve this via speech, I'd rather have people excited than confident, but we don't have the ability to give excite to uh, Philene, because she's the only one with it. So that guy is immune, basically immune to everything that isn't... Oh, uh, we, you know what, we went through this nonsense once before. It'll be fine. So Philene can get over here and lay down some of this war dance. And we're just gonna, we're gonna eat a real hit here. So you can take down one of them. And that gets us to two of three on our emotion spreader. And then the question is, can we get this guy, we can get his attitude down enough that he's not, uh, not confident anymore. Because you can only have the positive emotions if you're in the positive part of the emotion bar. Alright, unfortunately we pretty much guaranteed that Phylon's gonna get our head knocked off here. Oof. Okay, good dodge. Uh, so let's get Hojo over here so he can emotion spread this guy. And then I think we're just we're just gonna maybe throw a couple of devious attacks on this dude. I don't want to I don't want to attack him aggressively because I don't want to actually switch the mood. Okay, I'm sure we're we're way above. Yeah, friendly is ten points, devious is three. So we got him. We worked it out. He's gonna heal himself a little bit. I don't think that's gonna be enough to matter though. Nobody can resist the sweetness of Hojo's gifts. All right, with the patrol defeated, you can continue your adventure. And Phylin is leveling up. I think we have to take engineering perks. We're going to try to get some of these engineer team <laughs> porcelain points. You arrive at a town that is remarkably peaceful. Local guards are being bombarded with flowers, and people are singing songs together in protest of the current government. Looks like the people of this town have a strong, non-violent tradition. A local leader welcomes you. Welcome to Atiko, foreign friends. I'm Apichu. As you can see, the people here are angry with the current oppressive regime but we believe in finding a peaceful solution. All right, well, can we help? Ah, you see, our wise alderman has left Atiko in search of spiritual growth, but now he's gone, we miss his enlightened guidance in these troubling times. It's getting out of hand. My neighbor Henri almost threw a pebble at the guards. Okay, well, yeah, show us where he, show us where he went and we'll figure it out. Okay, so we're gonna have to take the, take the roads over to that other village. Uh... Let us travel along the Indian roads to another city. Let's travel to the Jungle Trade Post. Which is that thing over there. You arrive at a small trading post in the middle of the jungle. It's actually a pretty relaxing and nice place. Lamas. You are greeted by a wealthy trader. Welcome to our small trading settlement. Here you can hop on a llama and travel the lands quickly. Or you could trade some of those exotic goods for gold. Hell yeah, let's trade. So we'll make a deal for something that I don't even know what it is, but we get six collect tokens out of it, which is pretty great. And now we go in search of this, uh, in search of their wise alderman. And we found him. And we've described him as an old fart. The wise alderman from the peaceful village of Atiko is meditating in the mountains. He's surrounded by some very serious looking monkeys. You approach the man, but he quickly stops you. No, no, travelers. You've yet to show your true spirit. Um... Sorry, what was that? I know why you're here. The clouds have spoken to me. If you seek my guidance, you must show you are one with nature. Show it by conducting diplomacy with my primate brethren. This is ludicrous. 
so we can punch him and take some campaign tokens. This is a pretty good story. Uh, Hojo will not even attempt the role. He is too serious to attempt to talk to these monkeys. However, Phylan's kind of a genius. So let's just see if she can figure this out. 97% feels pretty, pretty likely. Classy. Phylan quickly becomes friends with the monkeys after generously offering a peace papaya. The alderman is pleased and the monkeys nod in agreement. Your spirit is truly peaceful. Allow me to grant you guidance with this peace poncho. If you listen closely to it, it will guide your soul. Uh, thanks. Cool. Uh, it gives plus 15 speech defense, minus plus negative 10 attack power. Uh, yeah, we will not be equipping that. Also, it gives the diplomat perk that Phylin already has. The poncho reeks of sweaty old man. Yes, this poncho holds all the knowledge I gathered on my journeys, and I never took it off. Don't wash out its wisdoms. You leave slightly disgusted, but it's time to return this blessing to the peaceful village of Attico. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't really have a chance to engage in an encounter there. Okay, now they want us to do devious stuff, man. Killing me game. Alright. Now you can see these guys charge a little bit more. Uh, we're going to swing by the plagued, the plagued city of Laktapata on our way back. Oh my, what a dark and troubled place. Local guards are everywhere, and the streets are teeming with the bones of the dead. The villagers look very afraid. A militia leader greets you. Welcome to Laktapata, brave travelers. I'm Juana Hatun, the head of the guard. Every day we are attacked by hordes of skeletons. Of course, that sorry excuse for an emperor refuses to help us. Uh, can we help? Yes, we're really in need of some help. A vile necromancer is terrorizing the city. She's been sending wave after wave of skeleton warriors because we won't accept her as our princess. The Emperor isn't doing anything to stop her, the lazy bum. Please, go confront the necromancer. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, her temple of death is well hidden, so I'll mark her temple of death for you. Also, don't be friendly to her in her temple of death. She doesn't take kindness kindly. That is really out of the way and inconvenient. Uh, visit the local shop. So we can trade resolve for supplies, which I would do with great excitement if we hadn't already lost three resolve on this adventure. I'm a little worried. I don't think we can help these people, unfortunately. Let's just head back to uh, Atiko, and then from there to the boss fight. Yeah, I just don't think we can help. Uh, about the peaceful guru. We found him, and he sent this poncho. Here, you take it. Oh, wow! I can smell the intense wisdom it emanates. Yes, with this garb, our resolve will be strengthened for the good cause. Please accept our gifts and knowledge. I feel confident that we can continue on the right path with this miracle poncho. Okay, big tokens. Thanks a million. Know that you'll always be welcome here. Uh, ah, Rivalry, you're killing me. So it looks like this is the way to go if we want to get out of here. Yeah, see, the problem with this is we would have had to spend... Oh, wow, we would have had to spend a bunch of supplies just getting here. And then we'd have to still get back. Like, I just don't think we had the... We didn't have the supplies necessary to go for that. You find nothing of interest here. Well, that's a shame. Uh, let's see if we can get some supplies. A field full of guava trees bearing fruit. The crew collects as much as they can for supplies. Cool. So that gives us enough supplies to go here and maybe here, depending on what it is. Or we could swing down this way. Yeah, let's swing down this way. The jungle is a bountiful place, full of fantastic creatures and interesting plants. Regrettably, also bugs. Lots of them. Big ones, small ones, dangerous ones, gross ones. Dolores has had quite enough of them. But yes, plants. Lots of plants. So we can take a supply, we can take an exotic specimen. Uh, I wish I could look at the map right now. I think we're just going to go straight to the exit from here. So let's take this. Yeah, this is what I thought, was that this node over here didn't connect. So yeah, let's just go to the exit. Final encounter. The palace. Treasure guarded by the dictatorial emperor must lie within. Once you face the emperor, the expedition will come to an end. Oh, we're ready. Of course, the palace is heavily guarded. Bummer. The crew regroups to plot a roguish diversion. It looks like it will be a tough challenge. Well, Phylan's pretty sneaky. This would be a bad time to fail.
Okay, the game just had to remind us that failure was a possibility. Great. With some clever sneaking, Phylin passes the guards and opens a side window. This creates a route for the rest of the crew to get safely past all those guards. The crew can enter the palace undetected. Now we walk down a hallway that is decorated with statues and carvings of the undisputed Emperor of the Incas. The atmosphere is getting heavy. Hojo knows that you'll face the Emperor right after opening the next door. And there he is, the Emperor, surrounded by his Imperial Guard. The Pretenders! They're here to overthrow your beloved leader and destroy the Incan lands! Easy, Tiger. Aren't we jumping to conclusions here? Uh, so we can say we've come to free the Incan people. We just want treasure. Uh, I don't know. I'm here to topple your government in favor of a more ex explorer-friendly one. Well, I am an American. This is sort of the option of my people. The Emperor is not impressed. I will have none of this! Warriors, round them up for punishment! He looks like a formidable force. Yeah, we'll just own him real fast and then we'll get back to uh, back to back to exploring. Alright, so there's a lot of tokens on offer for an aggressive completion. And I think we're probably not going to get this. So, screw that noise. If we can switch the mood four times, we'll get a porcelain point. If not, Rivalu will get it. So we may want to open with a friendly attack just so that we can get that uh, that quick friendly aggressive switch. Well, I think let's fall back and wipe out these guys back here. Yes, yeah, so let's open friendly. Maybe even with this, just to give her the boost. Yeah, you know what? The cooldown on War Dance is pretty short. So uh, it'll be up again by the time we need it. Ah, she can't get a kill. Now this does bonus damage if the opponent is aggressive. It doesn't matter what mood we're in. Come on. Let's have that damage very way, way up. This is a cool animation. Ah, we weren't quite able to get there. Unfortunately, all we can do is throw a punch. That's a shame. Our damage is just a little bit too low. And we didn't really make that much money on this adventure, so we're not probably going to be able to improve our equipment by very much. Yeah, I'm a little nervous. A little nervous about our next expedition. Things might get... rough. Uh, he just said cartoon cartoon. I heard that. I heard that. You can't pass that off on me. Alright, so these dudes are only weak to things that we don't have. That's true of... Oh no, he's weak against Enrage. Okay, we can work with that. Also, he only has 20 base armor, so that's pretty good for us. But he has a lot of these dudes... I mean, basically all of these guys are bonus damage from being confident guys. So if Dolores moves here, they can't quite get to us. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. I probably want to try to move to Hostile. Although that's not very easy to do. Why don't we hit this guy a couple of times? What's the, the cooldown on this is four turns. We really need to get some damage out, though. Also, uh, hitting people with aggressive attacks just lowers their emotion bar, which, uh... It, obviously, it won't inflict very meaningful... It won't inflict any meaningful status or anything, but it can pull them out of the positive statuses. Uh, he can't... Hojo's actually the one who can't even really, uh... He can't buff anybody or anything. Well, I can go throw an impress on one of these guys so that he's not... First of all, it does good damage, and secondly, it makes it so he's not, uh... Not confident anymore, so he doesn't have the mega bonus stats. We do need to switch the mood a couple more times. Alright. Good luck there. Oh. Use devious moves before he attacks because he's got a shotgun. Uh, while he's way out of range, not a lot we can do about that. Alright, let's pull this guy's confidence out as well. Uh, we might want to try to get into high grit mode, though. So let's see if we can get a devious kill here. Okay, good. 
Unfortunately, Dolores actually can't move far enough forward. Shoot. Dolores can't move far enough forward to use a devious ability on anybody, so we can't get our last pip before the Emperor uh, shoots us with a shotgun. I was really hoping to have some dodge when the gunfire started, you know? Well, we have a little bit of grit. Just have to hope to get lucky, I guess. Yeah, I know. I hope to get lucky isn't my favorite strategy, either. Oh, here it comes. Oh, wow. 40 damage. Holy crap. That's, um... That's crappy. Okay. Alright, well that hit him really hard. And it got us our grit. Phylon steps up to revive Hojo. And then if Hojo can get a devious attack off... Or actually, Hojo just needs to hit him, right? If we just pull him out of being confident, that'll help a lot. This would do a lot of damage, but we don't have the... I don't want to take the chance of missing. Okay. Okay, all you have to do is get him out of... out of positive, and he puts down the shotgun. Whew. Alright, well, it should be pretty easy for us to swap back to aggressive at some point during the fight, and that'll get us back our uh, mood switcher bonus. Man, the damn llama fight really depleted our uh, our resources. I'm just, like super nervous now. Okay, he's just bopping his dudes. We can handle that. Oh, that's right. Um, Primal Roar does a speech debuff now. That's I forgot about that. So unfortunately, we don't have a way of killing both of these dudes in one turn. I could do this, which Hojo will appreciate, and then we can punch this guy, but the other dude gets to stay up. I guess we can um, we can at least throw an impress on him so he's not confident anymore though, the same way we did with all the others. Yeah, this should work. This should keep us from, I don't think anybody will go down this turn. Because the Emperor doesn't actually have any attacks except for the shotgun thing. And he has to spend a turn charging up for that. Yeah, here it is. Uh, he did this in a really frustrating place, though. Uh, basically, if, if this misses, I think we probably will not get him out of shotgun mode in time to avoid another gunshot. Okay. We are totally safe, because now Hojo can come over here and crack this dude. And then, sometimes, uh, sometimes the animation doesn't play out exactly right. And now we can guarantee a Terrify that knocks him out of shooting mode. Okay, and now the fight's basically over. He's gonna spawn some more goons at some point here, but, um, there's a pretty good chance that they won't even get to us in time for it to matter. He's doing a lot of retreating, which could stop. I'd be okay with that. Can Dolores? Dolores can't participate if I do this. I was going to stab him, but we might actually be better off just getting an enrage on him, if we can. Okay, yeah, and then Dolores and Hojo can, can really let him have it. Oh, we don't even need Dolores. If you're in a place where a lot of the enemies are aggressive, Enough really does make you do a lot more damage. I, uh, I was a little dismissive of it initially, but I mean, it's... The reason I was dismissive is because it's not exciting, but it's still quite good. Alright, well, long live the revolution. The dictator is de defeated and the spoils are yours. So we pick up the centerpiece of the Imperial Art Collection, the Imperial Garb. Yeah, not bad. We definitely deserve this. Uh, so, plus research from study tokens... Or plus two study at the end of each expedition for each level of rogue. We have two, right? That's not actually going to be... That probably is going to end up being in the neighborhood of like six to eight study tokens. I don't intend to pick up a lot of rogue. So we might be better off just taking this, right? 
We're on 26 study tokens right now, so this is this is 52 extra study, which is about 10 tokens worth of study. Yeah, let's just take this. But as you're looting the palace, I appreciate that they just went out and said looting. A villager walks up to you. Uh, with the emperor gone, the council's wondering who's going to be the new emperor. Ugh. Finally realizes you can't leave these people with a civil war. Yeah, that's a thing that you can just resolve very easily. Finally, it takes place at the Incan Council that will determine the future of the, the Incan people. The future leader of the Incan people. It becomes clear that a new and independent leader must be chosen. Finally, would volunteer if it wasn't so much more boring than adventuring. Still, the council is eager to hear if Finally has a kid in it. Hey, how about that weird old guy? The council's not entirely sure. The sage was kind of seen as an old fool. Nevertheless, nobody has any better ideas, and he's invited to the court. And he accepts. I will be the spiritual leader of the Inca people. I will also gift this spirit scepter to the one who wisely sought my guidance. Hey, treasure. All right. What do we got here? Uh, these are okay options. Honestly, I might just... <laughs> three campaign, three study is fine. But I might just take two plus two research from study again. Yeah, let's just juice those study tokens way up. All right, well, the crew leaves the palace. That was quite the adventure, toppling a government and everything. Philin must admit, it was pretty fun. It wouldn't surprise her if this became a trend one day. Ah, uh, yeah. But the world has not been fully explored yet. You take your discoveries and get ready to leave. Okay, I see what the developers are poking, poking at there. I get it. That's fair. We deserve it. Uh, we still haven't completed the first level of either of the starting major challenges yet, so I'm a little embarrassed. But, uh, you know, we're getting closer. So, tournament training is worth 12 collect tokens per expedition now. The hunting plate, also worth 12 campaign tokens. And, of course, we're gaining supply capacity and insight, uh, thanks to our research bonuses. So, I mean, we're getting a lot of stuff at the end of every expedition. We're doing pretty well, I think. And we managed to sock away a fair number of encounter tokens there. That was not bad. Only 260 research. That show-off is at it again! This time the Emperor rewarded Rivalu more honorary titles because he built orphanages in Shanghai, London, and Rio with his very own hands and money. All kids want to be like him. You know, he's a smug dick, but it's sometimes it's hard to dislike him. Seems like orphans these days want to be annoying when they grow up. So, Rivalu, wow, Rivalu gets six porcelain points. If you refrain from doing three star or less expeditions, so I can... Again, the challenger title, which is worth four porcelain points, cannot do any twos or threes. Okay, so this just stacks up. Taking it and not taking it seem to be basically the same. Alright. This will unlock new possibilities on the world map, but you can only unlock one city per expedition. So, we could... We have a lot of options here. We can unlock some new insight jobs in Africa, which give a lot more tokens than the ones we have now. But I think I don't want to do that. Because uh, we're only going to be able to unlock so many of these things over the course of the game, right? And New Orleans has an entourage hall associated with it. And Sydney has an equipment shop that actually has some pretty powerful attack-focused gear. So the question is just, do I want the second entourage hall more than I want better gloves? I think the answer is yes. Yes, because we still really don't have all that much money. I mean, my attack stats are getting a little bit low. We're not dealing as much damage as I would like. But if we don't, if we don't take this, we're not going to have a lot of stuff to spend all this status on. Let's let's get the uh, entourage shop. Okay. So we need to have a level 5 Quick Thinker on our team. Well, we have a level 4 Quick Thinker, right? So that should be pretty easy to pull off. The Influential. Recruit two Specialists. Oh, we'll do that. Okay, this is this is looking pretty good for us. So, uh, first of all, Emotion Studies. So we, we choose one emotion and we give it an additional effect. So we can have Excited Opponents get Lowered Speech Defense. Terrified Opponents get Less Armor. I think this is probably the way we'll go. Enraged Opponents get Lowered Mischance. Uh, yeah, realistically our options are confident opponents lose armor or terrified opponents lose armor. Uh, we're not, we're pretty good at applying confident. Only Dolores is really good at applying terrified, 
but since we're almost always going to want to open with the AoE Terrify Roar, uh, it's hard to imagine that this is wrong. I mean, I'm actually pretty torn here. We definitely want one of these armored reduction effects. We don't... Uh, Phyland has this... Phylon has War Dance on a three-turn cooldown. And she has Primal Roar on a three-turn cooldown. But uh, we have a couple of other sources of... Well, we have one other source of guaranteed confidence. And also, some many dangerous physical enemies like to make themselves confident as a way of fighting you. We're going to take this. We're going to take the confidence bonus. Okay. Overconfidence. Choose this upgrade. Uh, we're also going to take the Art of Bartering. And the next research, or the next thing, unfortunately, costs four more research than we have. But we have to spend seven insight tokens before we can move forward. Well, before we uh, before we spend any insight, though, let's go to the new Entourage Hall, because I happen to know that it affects the payout of your stuff. So, do you have Nimble? You don't have Nimble. So, if we, if we hire Dirt and give Hojo the Nimble trait, we'll immediately satisfy this level 5 Quick Thinker thing. Uh, unfortunately, what I'm really looking for is... Here, let's upgrade this all the way. What I'm really looking for is like this. Here we go. Diplomat Languages or Rogue Sneaking. Now, we only have Diplomat Languages because of this trinket. If we give her Diplomat Languages, we can clear this out and give her different trinkets. Uh, and this is boosting the power of her Excite, but we really don't use her Excite all that often. But I think we probably want to hire Pistol Louise because we want to start getting research from our campaign tokens so that we have a chance of actually finishing this damn tree. Our other options would be what? Get Tactician or Archaeologist or Survivalist or Naturalist? Yeah, I think we really want... We really want some of this. But would we would we be better off taking rogue Oh no, we already have rogue sneaking. Okay, well that tears it. Uh so let's take off the translation guide. Oh. Let's take off the translation guide. Cause I don't know, it might uh it might be the case that if we recruited Pistol Louise with the guide equipped, it would say that we couldn't teach her languages because she already had it. Okay, Pistol Louise, a dancer who's actually a high-profile spy. That is the worst kind of spy to be, by the way. Uh, wants to teach you diplomat languages. Okay. And now we can spend our insight tokens, <coughs> or our insight stuff, just on Paris cam uh, on campaigning, and we'll get enough residual research to pull, uh, to pull the research paper we want without having to spend anything on actual research, because I think uh, that... It's way too expensive for us to come anywhere near getting another research paper. Uh, these guys just give an extra encounter token for our, your uh, for your chosen attitude. Obviously, we're going to go aggressive. And now this. So we can pick up plus status from collect tokens and get quick thinker ning nimble for Hojo. We can pick up diplomat negotiations and go to level 4 diplomacy here. And that... Uh, we have a we have a guy, yeah, we have a guy who would like us to have a level 4 diplomat. Ah yes, we're accomplishing things. So the question is, do we want to improve our I don't well, you know, we can take steam engines from Wild Whistlin' Willy and give our study tokens some status too. I'm actually pretty torn here. So what do we need? We need one more point to get the one point from Engineer Team. Uh, that's not a horrible play, I guess. We probably want to buff our campaign tokens. Uh, I'm so torn. Actually, we should look ahead and see what expedition we plan to do next. Uh, and by that, I mean we should uh, figure out what is at this expedition, because this is where we want to go next due to Phylon's crew story. Tactician, Survivalist, Rogue, and Archaeologist Challenge. Aggressive and friendly approach is recommended. Hey, that's us. So we're mostly going to find gold and status. Uh, that's good. That's really what we need. Tactician, survivalist, rogue, archaeologist.
Well, we don't really have a lot of options here that uh, fall into those types. I think we're just going to take Quick Thinker Nimble for Hojo. More sources of status. And this incidentally completes another thing. Alright, we're only 10 behind. We're going to hit Famous pretty soon. We're going to get to these pretty soon. Honestly, I think we're in a pretty good place. Uh, so we have a little bit of status left. We're going to want to hire these barterers so that we go into the next expedition with a ton of supply capacity. So let's not uh, let's not spend our status until after we spend our insight. Okay, that looks pretty good. That's a pretty that's a pretty compelling payout. All right, so we buy another increase for our secret token. So it would take 120 research for us to get down to like mind analysis, which is something I would really like to have, but I don't think we can get anywhere near 120 research out of the tokens we have, right? So we're gonna average 27 research. Well, actually, all those buffs to our research tokens have really added up. How much was it? 120? So it would probably take about five insight spends. Oh man, if we got here... Right, because she is a level... F no, she's a level 3 big either. Well, we might be able to correct that with um, with items. If we could get to Mind Analysis, and then we have a level 4 Quick Thinker and a level 4 Beguiler, uh, we could get a lot of secret tokens. Well, it has to be specifically on Beguiler, Quick Thinker, or Tactician spins, though. And those are not the kind of spins we're expecting, right? I've already forgotten what the things were. Yeah. Well... And our other option is just to buy campaign tokens and then use the money to hire helpers. Actually, are we all clear on our specialists? Do we have a specialist who is unhired yet? We do. So we could hire you. That doesn't seem that great. Or one of these two, just for the extra tokens. I don't know that we need a point of naturalist. Although I guess it never hurts to have a little a little breadth in your uh, your perk selection. There's no way we get to level four tactician, right? We just don't have the money. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think that we're going to get a lot of value out of mind analysis, so we probably shouldn't push for it. Maybe what we should do though is spend all the spend all the stuff on research, get Asian wisdom, and that way when we come back from the next job we can spend all of our insight in Asia. We'll have the ability to unlock uh, Asia through the letter that we get to send at the end of the next expedition, but we'll use that instead to unlock the uh, the top level entourage shop. We'll use this to unlock Asian wisdom. Uh, I guess if I'm going to get 120 research anyway, it wouldn't matter. But if we get less than 120 research on the next expedition, then I'll feel real dumb. I guess 120 research is only... Huh. No, let's do it this way. Let's go ahead and spend on research in Berlin. We'll make sure that we get Asian Wisdom, and we will uh, then be able to spend all of the insight from the final expedition, plus the nine that we bank here, in Asia, for maximum benefit. Because our secret tokens are pretty powerful now. We'll be able to buy a lot of secret tokens. Okay, I think this was a sensible thing to do. Okay, well, uh, that is going to be... Nope, we still have some resources. I think I'm going to buy a barterer and, like, a lobbyist? Yeah. We'll be able to afford the rest of the barterers at the end. Okay, let's spend some gold now. Uh, so, we pay 100 gold 
to upgrade the shop and then sell some stuff and be able to afford adventure boots, which will give us another 10 grit and finally move us up over this threshold. That doesn't feel awesome. But it does give Phylet a better chance of passing any rolls that we may encounter. Yeah, okay. Let's let's do it. I convinced myself pretty easily there. So we'll move the Master Boots down onto Hojo. Buy some Adventure Boots for Phylet. And then we don't really have a use for this anymore. If we sold this, we'd get 75 for it. And then we could use that to buy... Uh, another weapon. We could use it to buy, like, another set of good gloves. Slowly raising our combat stats. Yeah. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't nervous about this next expedition. But, uh... Oh, yeah. True Grit. Okay. If we can beat Rivalu to, uh to 55 grit. I think that's going to definitely give us a real a really good shot at actually winning this game. All right, well that's going to be it for this video. Jesus, these are long. <laughs> Come back next time. Expedition 4. We're going to the brand new Anagogic Archipelago and completing whatever Phylon's mysterious crew story is. And we'll see you then.